Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is episode 646, and with me today, we'll bring him on soon, is Robert Chansey. He is my practice manager, and he has guided us through this coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak and all of the landmines that go with it. And so we want to talk to him here in a minute. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. This is the 10th show in a series of all pre-recorded shows due to the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. And because of that, there's no question of the day. And you might remember that the reason we're pre-recording is that station management doesn't want very many people in the building, although I have a feeling that's going to end soon. I think we'll be able to go back in very soon. But in the meantime, we recorded this yesterday. Okay, so as I mentioned, with me today is Robert Chansey. He is my office manager. You may know that I had several other members of my team on the show uh, during the COVID-19 outbreak and the shutdown and then the eventual reopening. But I was probably remiss. I probably should have had Robert on first because he was the one probably most affected, the one that had to help guide us through this. And so let me start, Robert, first of all, by thanking you for being on the show. Of course. I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you. And so basically, let me start with this. Obviously, the COVID-19 coronavirus and its effects on dental offices, it's like a once in a hundred year event. So there was no playbook for how to guide a dental office through it. How did you navigate this office through it? What did you do? Who did you consult? You know, that sort of thing. The first place I started was with the Ohio Department of Health, just getting the basic information on what's going on and, and how this was spread. And we kind of got lucky with the Ohio Dental Association coming through with the same information. So when the two matched up, learn, when they matched up, you yeah. felt comfortable. Okay. Yep. It allowed us to really understand what steps we need to take and how to protect our team and our patients, which was my primary goal from the beginning. So there was the dental board, there was the Ohio Dental Association, and there was the ADA. Did you consult all three? I did. Yep. The ADA was kind of my third one. They were the slowest ones to come up with the information, but I think Ohio kind of came ahead of the game with everything compared to most other states. So I think that's why the ODA was a little bit faster on their stuff. Okay. All right. So they put out information as each day went by and uh, you've confirmed that there was more than one source saying the same thing and that's what made you feel comfortable. Yes. That's how I like to make those decisions is finding out all the information I can before a decision is made. That way it's not jumping ahead, jumping to conclusions. There's you know, factual evidence. Right, right. I remember at one point I was with a patient. You asked me to come out into the hall and on the phone you had the, was it the director of the Ohio Dental Association? Yes. Was. Okay. And he was informing us on, I believe the topic back then was if the patient's here for root canal, do we do the root canal only and put a temporary or do we do the root canal and the filling and stop or do, the, do we do the root canal, the filling and the crown and stop? Was that what that was? That was, yeah. Okay. And actually that was going to be one of my questions. So basically some people felt you should have just done the root canal and a temporary. Some said do the root canal and a filling and some said just do it all because you're going to prevent the patient from having to come back for another emergency visit, right? Right. 
when you're trying to, the, the ultimate goal is to limit exposure. And a lot of offices were just doing the root canal and then doing a filling or temporary crown, something of that sort. And that patient had to come back a second time to get the crown or get whatever needed to be done afterward. And that just double exposed them whenever it didn't have to happen that way. Right, right. So we decided if we're going to work on a tooth, even if it's an emergency, we're going to do the entire tooth. We're going to get it finished. So no more pain, no more return visits. We're done. And of course, we can do that because of the same day crown machine we have called the Cirac. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So now, before the governor shut down all dental offices, except for emergency care, of course, and we were still fully open, what were your concerns? I think we were all incredibly concerned just because with so many public members coming in and out and not knowing where they had been or what they had been doing, it was hard to tell, you know, are we going to be safe as staff members and are we going to spread it to some of our elderly patients or our family members? So it's definitely something that was scary for everyone prior to the shutdown. Right, right. And so... But we use universal precautions. We had a meeting and you explained that to the staff that we were already using universal precautions. So what, were you really concerned or were you just trying to allay the fears of some of the staff members who were starting to get nervous? It was kind of a mixture of both, but on the personal side, I have to protect my family at home at the same time. So whenever you're hearing, hey, you can carry this and never have a symptom and infect other people, personally, that was a little scary. But I liked the fact that the staff was receptive to, hey, we already do these standard precautions and we're going to take these additional steps to make it even safer. So that made everyone feel a little bit better and made me feel better myself as well. Okay. And so tell me what are the precautions that we added in addition to what we were already doing? And by the way, what we were already doing was wearing gloves. I have a face shield. We were wearing uh, clinic gowns. We were already wearing gowns, not the disposable kind, but the kind that you wash, you know, at the end of the day. And we were wearing face masks. So what did you, what you have to add? We added in additional precautions with every staff member wearing a face shield and wearing N95 masks, which have been shown to be some of the most protective for the staff members and for the patients themselves. And then in addition to, we are now wearing those disposable gowns as well, allowing us to change between patients so that nothing's transferred from one patient to another. Not that it was before, but this is kind of that we're going above and beyond side of it. Right. And then also taking patients' temperatures and asking them a series of questions that are COVID symptoms just to see, hey, have you had a recent cough? Have you had a fever? Have you had any of these shortness of breath or other symptoms that relate to it? And that way we can prevent them from coming in if they've had those symptoms themselves. Exactly. Right. So we feel like the people that are coming into the building are clean, so to speak, because we already know their history. We know if they've been careful, that sort of thing, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Now, once the governor shut down all dental offices, did your concerns gradually change as more and more businesses were shut down? They did a little bit. I think my initial thought was, you know, this is something serious, but most likely the government's going a little bit overboard with shutdowns and, and you know, thinking that dental offices are the primary carriers and things of that sort. So I thought it would be short-lived. I thought it would be something that was just, you know, a week or so. And then whenever they started shutting down more offices and more buildings and more restaurants and things of that sort, I started realizing you know, this is a lot more serious than what I thought. So I started digging even deeper into what precautions can we take? What steps can we take to protect ourselves and protect our families and our patients? And we were already doing those things, so there wasn't much to add other than having to eliminate the lobby, right? allowing people to stay out of the lobby and keep that social distancing. Right. So that was kind of neat to find that even though they were shutting down more and more businesses and eventually shut everything down, you didn't really find yourself having to make many changes after that first round because we were already doing them. Correct. Yeah. It made me feel a little bit better that we were already taking those steps because other offices weren't taking those steps and they were putting people at risk in my opinion. Yeah. I think we interviewed a girl for Front Desk and she was telling us that the office she was working at gave them one level three mask, which is many levels below the N95. They didn't even have N95 masks. They would get one level three mask a day and we were appalled. Correct. We were appalled, right? Yep. I mean, if you're going to give somebody one mask a day, it should be an N95 for one. And so we throw away the uh, level threes between patients and we keep the N95 behind them. Anyway, yeah, thank you for making sure that we were guided properly through this. And uh, I have many, many more questions. I'm looking at the clock and I realize it's probably time for us to go to a break. So can you hang in there with me? I will. Okay, sounds good. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said, People don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. 
Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Guess what? We're open and here to take care of all of your dental needs. It's been a long time coming, but in the words of Governor DeWine, it's full steam ahead. During the time we were closed, we were acquiring PPE. We were developing a plan to keep you safe. We've had Zoom meetings, a very active text string, and in addition to going into the office to take care of emergencies, we've been in complete contact with each other, so we'd be ready. Are you ready? We bet your teeth and gums are. Don't forget, your teeth haven't been cleaning themselves. Your cat haven't been getting any smaller and your gum disease hasn't been healing itself and if you haven't had x-rays in a while or an exam there could be a lot of things going on in there that you're not aware of because let's face it cavities don't hurt even abscesses don't hurt until they get really bad call us at 614-262-9588 that's 614-262-9588 or go to drkvitko.com that's d-r-k-v-i-t-k-o.com I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 646 of The Reasons We Smile. With me is Robert Chancy. He is my office manager. I guess more correctly, you're the practice manager, correct? That is correct, yes. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to give you a demotion there. And so <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing is talking about how we have navigated with your guidance through the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. And so I want to find out, you're responsible for making sure that we are fully staffed. And how has COVID-19 affected your ability to make sure that, let's say, dental assistance, to make sure we had enough dental assistance? This has really impacted dental offices all over and really affected our staffing, primarily because a lot of people are so scared and they don't realize the information that is out there to protect themselves and to protect others and so instead they're just scared and don't want to come back or they don't want to go in and work so it's been quite difficult to find substitute or to hire new staff when necessary right so if we have somebody call in sick you're having a hard time getting a temporary replacement to come in huh correct it's it's almost impossible at this point. Really? Wow, it's gotten that bad. What about with dental hygienists? Is that better or worse than dental assistants? I actually feel it to be a little bit worse. And I think primarily they're scared because one of the things that we were told to watch for and try to eliminate is the aerosol that comes out into the room whenever we're doing our work because that aerosol also contains the patient's saliva. So that goes into the air and then can be on the patient, be on the staff members, as well as flow through the hallway and the air system. So hygiene is something that creates a lot of aerosol if it's not controlled. And I think that's the big scared part for hygienists is, hey, I'm in front of aerosol the entire time I'm with this patient. And I think it's scaring them a little bit. Okay. One way we can solve that would be to limit the use of the ultrasonic scaler. That would be one. The other would be having a dental assistant suction so that the aerosol is collected before it leaves the oral cavity, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah, so we should be, I mean, it can be done safely. And luckily for us, we were able to find a hygienist, a wonderful young lady that uh, joined us and we love her to death. Her name is Galila. And I think I told her told her on Friday that um, we're so, so happy to have her. And, and so, yeah, we just got lucky there, I guess. Now, we did, yes. 
<laughs> so one of the things you had to navigate was rescheduling all of the appointments that were already on the books before we were told to close. So how did you do that and how smoothly did it go? Let's start with how did you do it? Um, one of the easiest parts was a lot of people in today's technology utilize email and text message. So I was able to send out text messages and emails to people letting them know this is what the, the state of Ohio is mandating and these are the steps that we're taking and letting them know we're going to have to reschedule and as soon as we know a date and time we're going to reach out to you. Of course there are people who don't utilize email and text message so that's where we got on the phone making those phone calls and comforting those patients letting them know that we're protecting them and our staff as well and following the state mandate to reschedule those appointments okay so would you consider that it went smoothly it could have gone a little bit smoother <laughs> <laughs> tell <laughs> me about the bumps of, what were the bumps in the road there were a lot of patients who you know don't check their answering machine don't check their voicemails and Luckily, we only, from my knowledge, we only had two or three patients over that 45 day period who didn't get the message that their appointment was rescheduled. And I feel that, of course, we apologize because we don't want them to not be in the loop of what's happening with their appointment. But the fact that they also drove to the office, but that's where, unfortunately, some people don't take their own, how do I put it appropriately? They don't take their own steps to make sure that they're covered for their appointment. Oh, got so it. They're not com huh. confirming them or listening to their voicemails. <laughs> Okay. Because maybe it came from a number they didn't recognize. I don't know. People are so funny about that. I guess to me, the word I would, what I would say to folks is even if you don't want to pick up a phone call from some, a number you don't recognize, if there's a voicemail, please listen to it. It could be us, <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> so you're thinking that's what it was. They didn't recognize the number and, and said, well, I'm not even going to listen to that voicemail. I think that was that's the big part most of the time is, especially there's so many phone calls that come into your cell phone a day that aren't important. And so they just don't take the time to listen to the voicemails and realize that it is something important. Okay. And so I think I mentioned that one way we could get around that would be to ask you guys up front to text them, but we only have one cell phone for the office. So that would be a challenge to be able to text everybody to let them know that it's us. But you did reach out to a few people that way, right? We did, yes. Yeah. And then we delayed solution reach which is a program that allows us to send more of a mass text message and it just tells them dr kavitko and associates and it's very short and it lets them know something's happening you know we've rescheduled or we need you to call us so that was something that helped a lot because that helped a lot of people give us a call okay but we had to suspend it because otherwise they'd be getting confirmation uh texts saying hey your appointment's tomorrow at two and we were shut down <laughs> yep <laughs> So kind of like uh, it's darned if you do and darned if you don't, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> the clean version. All right. So now, okay, I'm looking at the clock again, and I believe, yeah, it's probably time for us to go to another break. I do have, let's see, one, two, three, four, oh, about uh, five more questions, maybe six. But uh, we'll have to do those after the break. So uh, uh, can you hang with me for a little bit longer? Yep. Awesome. Folks, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile, episode 646, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, and I just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, because... You're too much for me. Yeah. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> All right, 
we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 646. With me is my practice manager, Robert Chancy. We've been speaking with him about guiding the office through the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. And you might remember at the beginning of the show, I mentioned how this was pre-recorded and we recorded it yesterday because of station management not wanting too many people in the building yet. All right, so that would have been cool, except that when Robert and I were doing the interview, we lost the last nine and a half minutes of the interview. And so I found that out or figured that out almost immediately. And so what I did was I texted Robert and I said, hey, Robert, I'm so sorry, but we lost the last nine and a half minutes of the interview. Can we do it again? And he was very, very cordial, very polite. And he said, absolutely, just call me whenever you want. I did, and we re recorded it. But guess what? Before I could put this all together in one show, it disappeared again. <laughs> it disappeared again. And go figure, I actually got a, I think a pop-up on my Adobe Audition asking me if I was happy with the service, happy with the program. And I happened to choose not to uh, rate it. And uh, turns out it's a good thing because it screwed up. So here's what I'm going to do. Robert's going to probably be upset at me for doing this, but I really didn't want to bother him again. And since we did the last nine minutes twice, I kind of have memorized what his answers were. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask the questions and I'm going to tell you what his answer was. And when Robert hears this, he'll probably say, why didn't you call me? And I'll say, because I didn't want to bother you. <laughs> okay. So let's see. The first question that I asked him when we returned was, tell me about your experience with dental insurance companies during COVID-19. Now, I remember him mentioning to me that it appeared as though Delta Dental wasn't paying patient claims as in a timely fashion. And I asked him if he thought that they furloughed a bunch of workers and they just aren't able to respond as quickly as before, or did he think it was something else? So Robert said that he's pretty sure that what was happening was that Delta must have had people working from home and that they just didn't have the response time that they would have if they had been in the office and sitting at their desk. Well, that sounds kind of fair and that's probably true. I mean, I guess you could surmise that there's something else going on that they just decided to send everybody home because there weren't many claims and those claims that were getting sent in could just wait. <laughs> I don't know if that's it or not. It probably was just that people were working from home. Okay. The next question that I asked him is now that businesses are reopening, are you finding patients more open to receiving dental care? And he said, actually, the answer to that is yes, because initially we were finding people who had an appointment or even they'd make an appointment on a Friday and they'd cancel it on Monday because they would have second thoughts. They started thinking, hmm, maybe it's too soon. Maybe I shouldn't go yet. Maybe it's not safe. But now as you see other businesses open, restaurants are open, gyms are open, oh, barbershops, massage parlors and groomers. So yeah, people are more open to having dental care than they were before. I asked him if he saw any other trends and he said, not really other than, and this was his answer. It appears to him to be honest that people are even more interested in having their dental work done and keeping their mouth healthy. He said, it seems to him that because of the coronavirus and because of all of this focus on being healthy, that it's made people aware that the mouth is part of the overall body and that in order to have a healthy body, you have to have a healthy mouth and that people are purposely working towards achieving that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I think that, and, and if he's right, that is really cool. And you know what? I think he is because uh, as I explained to him when, our, when we did the interview two times before, we had a record month for May and it would be our best month of the year. And I believe it would rival our best month of 2019. So yeah, that's probably what's going on, which is awesome. Okay. Now, the other thing I asked him was, what was your biggest challenge in guiding our dental office through the COVID-19 minefield. And I'm doubting myself a little bit here, but I think what he said was trying to convince both staff and patients that we were taking all of the right steps, making sure that people understood that, trying to put people's fears at ease to allay their fears. Okay. Because, you know, he was doing a lot of research. He was doing his very best to make sure we were going above and beyond what was required what were the suggestions? And so, you know, there were times when he had to reassure both team members and patients that, uh, yes, you're in good hands. Everything is safe. We're all going to be in good shape. Then I asked him 
What aspect was it that he found the easiest or easier than expected? And he said it was clearing the lobby, that people have been very, very cooperative. Now, the way we handle things is we ask them to stay in their car and we come out and he takes their temperature with our forehead thermometer and asks them questions. And people are very, very cooperative and uh, almost, um, not almost, I think they really appreciate it. So that's gone rather smoothly. So I want to thank everybody for that. Okay, my next question to Robert was, if you could look into a crystal ball and see three months into the future, what do you think you would see? And he said, hmm, okay. I think what I'm going to see is, and I hate to say this, is that there might be an increase, like a second wave, like a, a little spike in people who have the coronavirus because of people maybe getting too lax about social distancing and forgetting that we, we flatten the curve by doing it and that we need to keep it flat by continuing it. So that's what he said at three months. And then I went on to ask him, what did he think it would see, look like in his crystal ball at six months? And he said at six months, it would kind of be in the rearview mirror, still recent and all that. But he felt like we would have a vaccine by then because we know that they are fast tracking uh, vaccines and that it would uh, be, we would still be being careful, but it would be a little bit in the rearview mirror. And then I asked him to look in his crystal ball and, and tell me what he would see if he looked one year from now, if he looked ahead one year. And he said it would be a memory that we will have moved on, that we will have had the vaccine now for a while, and that all of, all of these extra precautions that we have been taking or are taking now would be a memory. Certainly, we're never going to forget because this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and it's something that we'll be telling our kids and grandkids and will be in the history books for a thousand years. And then I asked him to look forward two years. What did he think we would see if we looked forward two years? And he said it would be a distant memory, but certainly not forgotten for the same reasons that I just mentioned. So, and you know what? I, I think I agree with him. In fact, I, I hope he's right. And uh, it'll be nice not to have to, when the vaccine has come and we've all received it, and I made a comment about, let's hope that everybody gets the vaccine. Because we have people like Jenny McCarthy who are anti-vaccinators and who has a big following. And let's just hope that uh, more people get the vaccine than would normally get a vaccine. And let's hope, in my case, that my patients don't follow Jenny McCarthy's advice. <laughs> uh, I, I also think it's a good time to mention here that those who forget history are doomed to repeat it. And that's why we can never, ever forget. Okay, so yeah, folks, it's been a challenge. It's been exciting. It's been weird. It's been taxing. I know that, but you know what? We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And how often have you heard me say things are never so bad that they couldn't be worse? And I truly, truly believe that. So what's the takeaway from today's show? Folks, we are doing everything we possibly can to make your visit comfortable, to make it safe for both you and for our staff. We have gone above and beyond, and we will continue to do that. And we hope, we very much hope, that there is a vaccine on the horizon and that pretty soon we can get back to doing what we used to do. Uh, I do worry that when I see a new patient, when I meet a new patient, that I'm not making the same connection with them because they can't see me smile because of my mask. And in fact, I met this uh, couple the other day and uh, they both had masks on and I don't know if I could pick them out of a crowd. I don't know if I could pick them out of a lineup for that matter because all I saw was his and her eyes. You know, their, their masks went all the way under their chin and I'm glad they were wearing masks. I had a mask on too, but it's kind of strange, don't you think? I mean, don't you agree? It really, really is. And at that point, of course, Robert said, yes, he agreed. <laughs> this is weird, isn't it? Uh, I just wish I hadn't lost that file two times in a row, but anyway. So, folks, hang in there. Things are slowly getting better. We're all getting through this. We've heard many, many times how we're all in this together. I'm not really sure what that means, honestly. Um, meaning, are we all unemployed together? Are we all uh, stuck at home together? Whatever that is, but... Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting time, and we do have to pull together, at the very least, and get through it. Well, looks like that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. 
Before we go, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kivitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to the reasons we speak.